Now, one of the most useful tools in chemistry is analysis of a chemical formula and the wealth of ratios you can get from it to do conversions of various types. And so I've written a problem here to demonstrate a second type of problem we can work if we know the formula of the compound. Now, since iron 3 is Fe3 plus as a cation, and oxide, being group 6, is a negative 2 anion, the formula of iron 3 is, of course, oxide is 2 to 3 irons to oxygens. Now, of course, we talked about the trinity that we can use uh, in reference to iron 3 oxide on our last video. And in order to get that, we know that one mole of anything, including iron 3 oxide, equals Avogadro's number of those things. And since those things are ionic formula units, we call it formula units of iron 3 oxide. And we also know it equals the gram formula mass of iron 3 oxide. So we need to calculate that. And if the compound has two iron atoms at 55.8 atomic mass units each, that accounts for 11.6 of the mass units in the compound. And oxygen accounts for three atoms at 16 atomic mass units each, or 48, giving us a total of 159.6 units of mass. So yes, to complete our trinity here, this much iron oxide would be that many grams of iron oxide. In our last video, we used this trinity to convert mass to moles, mass to formula units or molecules if it was a molecular compound, and molecules or formula units to moles because all three of those ratios are contained in this. But today I want to focus on these ratios. Because, yes, what this is telling me is the majority of this total mass is iron, and only a small percentage is oxygen. And I can actually construct ratios out of these. For instance, there is a part to whole ratio of iron to, this is the whole, iron 3 oxide. Namely, there are 111.6 grams, kilograms, whatever units you want of iron for every 159.6 kilograms of iron oxide. And I can use this conversion factor, these ratios, to convert from mass of iron to mass of iron oxide, or vice versa, mass of iron oxide to mass of iron. There's another part to whole ratio, 48.0 grams, kilograms, any units you want of oxygen to every 159.6 grams of the whole, iron oxide, yet again. And in some problems, I might want to convert directly from iron to oxygen in the compound, and there is another ratio. There are 111.6 grams, kilograms, pounds, if you want, of iron for every 48 pounds of oxygen that are in the compound. And this would be useful if I wanted to convert a mass of iron to a mass of oxygen in iron 3 oxide, or a mass of oxygen to a mass of iron. So it's important to realize when I have a formula, I not only have the trinity of relationships for conversion, but I also have all the mass part to whole, part to whole, part to other part ratios. So in this problem, where we're given 32.0 pounds of iron 3 oxide, we're asked what mass of iron is there. And if I were to use this mass of iron 3 oxide, it's not going to let me convert to mass of iron. So the only place I see a mass of iron by itself is right here in the ratio. So if I like to start with the answer, mass of iron, I'll start with 111.6, I have to pick some units of mass, and pounds seem advisable in this problem. Pounds of iron for every either 48 pounds of oxygen or 159.6 pounds of iron oxide. And since I have pounds of iron oxide to cancel those pounds, I'm going to use that relationship. 
because this is true. Given this formula and a 2 to 3 ratio and these masses, this part of the whole mass is a relationship I can use for conversion. Part to whole, whole to part. And if I simply multiply this by 32.0 pounds iron oxide given in the equation, I get my final answer. Or 22.4 pounds of iron. So yes, that makes sense that the part is less than the whole. The part, the fraction of this that is iron is less than the whole iron oxide. And considering iron makes up more than two-thirds of the total mass, this should make up more than two-thirds of the total mass too. Now let's skip down to another problem. And in this case, we're dealing with nickel-2 carbonate. So of course, I like to write out everything I know. And since nickel's plus 2 and carbonate's minus 2, it's a simple relationship of nickel and carbon and oxygen. And yes, I know that in this formula unit of this ionic compound, there's one nickel atom. And nickel has a mass of 58.7 atomic mass units. And the carbon atom in the formula accounts for 12 atomic mass units, less than a quarter of what the nickel does. But the oxygen, by virtue of the fact that it's three atoms, accounts for almost half of the molecule's mass as well. And when you add these all together, we get a combined mass of 118.7 for the whole nickel oxalate. And yes, in case I need it, I know my trinity of relationships, one mole, of nickel carbonate equals Avogadro's number of, in this case, formula units because it's an ionic compound of nickel carbonate. And it also equals the gram formula mass, the formula mass in grams exclusively, 118.7 grams nickel carbonate. So now, in this problem, I'm given one thing. I'm given 3.0 kilograms of oxygen. And I am asked, what mass of nickel is there? Well, I go looking for a mass of nickel, and this is not a mass of nickel. It's a mass, but it's nickel carbonate. The only place I see a mass of nickel all by itself is right here. So I like to start with the answer. There are 58.7. Now I have to pick mass units, and I'm going to pick kilograms to maybe save time in converting. And I'm going to pick the ratio of part to part nickel to oxygen because when I write the part to part ratio of nickel to oxygen, I have to cancel the oxygen to end up with a mass of nickel. And I was given a mass of oxygen. So when I multiply, those masses cancel, and I get my answer, 3.7 kilograms of nickel. As a fourth example, or third, excuse me, we can jazz it up a little bit here. Not much, but a little bit, by giving a little more information. Now, first of all, the substance is once again iron three oxide, so I remind myself of all the mass ratios. There were 101.6 mass units of iron, and 48, that's a zero, 48 mass units of oxygen for a total of 159.6 for iron 3 oxide. So yes, we have part to other part, part to whole, other part to whole ratios of mass, and yes, one mole of anything, including iron 3 oxide, equals Avogadro's number times 10 to the 23rd formula units, iron 3 oxide, and all of those also equal the gram formula mass, 159.6 grams of iron 3 oxide. So I say to myself, what other information am I given in this problem? And actually quite a bit. It says a raw ore is 12% by mass iron 3 oxide. So I immediately write this ratio. There are 12 mass units of iron 3 oxide for every 100 mass units of ore. 
And then I'm also given this right here, namely a mass of ore, 50.0 pounds of ore. And when I do my number units label type problem, I like to start with the answer. I ask what quantity is being requested. And in this case, kilograms are units of mass. They want a mass of pure iron. They don't want a mass of iron oxide. They want pure iron. So I go looking for a mass of iron. And here's a mass, but it's not iron. Here's a mass, but it's not iron. Another mass, another mass, neither one's iron. The only place I see a mass of pure iron is right here in ratio with the mass of oxygen or with the mass of iron oxide. And of course, because all my data over here is about iron oxide and ore, I'm going to use this ratio to start the problem. 111.6, I have to settle on mass units. I'm going to go with pounds to maybe save time converting. Pounds of iron per 159.6 pounds of iron oxide. And I'm on the board. There's my answer essentially, a mass of iron. All I have to do is cancel this mass of iron oxide. It's only one thing that cancels the mass of iron oxide. That's a mass of iron oxide. Now, here I see a mass of iron oxide, but if I use it to cancel, I am going to end up with formula units or moles, which don't seem to be getting me towards ore. However, if I use this mass of iron 3 oxide, I'll substitute it with a mass of ore getting me much closer to final cancellation. So yes, I will use the fact that 12 pounds of iron oxide are equivalent to 100 pounds of ore. And that makes the mass of iron oxide cancel, substituting a mass of ore. But that's okay. I can cancel that now. 50 pounds of ore and pounds of ore cancel pounds of ore, leading, leaving me with a mass of iron. That's what I wanted. And of course, in this process, I always do one last check, one last step. See if the units of the quantity you wanted are the requested units. In this case, no, so I have to convert these pounds of iron to kilograms of iron. One more step, 2.20 pounds of iron equal one kilogram of iron. Boom, boom. And I am left with a mass of iron in the units that I want. And it's all equal to 1.91 pounds of pure iron. So we only get about 2 pounds of iron from this 50 pounds of ore, 48 pounds of waste, stuff that isn't iron.